Hi, Assalamualaikum and good day. So now we will continue with chapter 8. Another operation management strategy is location strategy. So the most important, this is another most important decision in operation management. Okay, the outline for this chapter. So now we will see the example uh, for the location strategy that used in the, this textbook is FedEx. Okay, so FedEx, um, they started uh, with one, okay, one central location in Memphis. Okay, so why was the Memphis picked by as FedEx central location? Okay, this is because it's located in the middle of the U.S. The second, because it has very few hours of wet, bad weather closures. Okay. And the third uh, reason why Memf uh, Memphis uh, picked as FedEx Central Location is that because this uh, location provides FedEx with a generous tax incentive. Okay. Uh, the concept, uh, Central Hub concept in the Memphis, um, so that so that a uh, FedEx can bring to Memphis the package from throughout the world that are going to cities for which FedEx does not have a direct flight. Okay? So this central hub helps permit service to, to, to provide the services uh, uh, with a fewer aircraft than the tra traditional system. Okay? And also that it will enable, okay, uh, or it will match uh, the aircraft flights with uh, package package loads each night, and also they can reroute flights when the load volumes requires it, okay, so that they can save a major cost. Moreover, okay, the FedEx also believe that the central hub system helps to reduce the mishandling and delay in transit because there is a total control over the package from the pickup point to the delivery. Okay, these are learning objectives. Okay, so at the end of this chapter, so students should able to first identify and explain the seven major factors the effect location decision, a second, compute labor productivity, and then the third, apply factor rating method, a fourth, complete a locational break-even analysis graphically and mathematically. Then, uh, use the center of gravity method, and the last, to understand the difference between the service and industrial sector location analysis. Strategic importance of location. The world markets now continue to expand and the global nature of business is accelerating. Okay. The strategic location is the one of the most important decision that a firm has to make. And it is increasingly global in nature, for instance, that when FedEx opened its Asian hub in Guangzhou, China, it is set the stage for round-the-world flights linking its Paris and Memphis package hubs to Asia. When the Hard Rock Cafe opened in Moscow, it ended the three years of advanced preparation of Russian food supply chain. Okay, so it's a global, it's uh, increasingly in the global. And the strategic location or decision about the strategic location is a greatly affects both both fixed and variable costs. Okay. So we can see that uh, location strategy cost take as much as 25% of the product selling price. Okay. It's about one fourth of a firm's total revenue.
and the companies make location decision relatively infrequently. Okay, usually it because the demand has outgrown the current plans plants capacity or because of changes in labor productivity, or exchange rates, uh, cost or local attitudes. Okay, and sometimes company might may also relocate their manufacturing or service facility because of shifts in demographics and customer demand. And this is a long-term decision making. Okay, Once the company committed to a certain location and it is very difficult to change the location because it involves many resources and the cost issue. So they have to make a very careful decision. The objective of location strategy is to maximize the benefit of location to the firm. Okay, so the options to when they want to choose the location strategy, okay, the first option they might expand the existing facility, or uh, they can maintain the existing and add another site. Okay. Or last one, they can choose that to close the existing and relocate their facilities to a new location. Okay, so this option when they want to maximize the benefits of location to the firms. Okay, either they want to expand the existing or, or just maintain the existing and add another new sites at a new location or just close a new existing and relocate a new uh relocate the, the that facility to a new location. Because the location is such a significant cost and revenue driver, so location often has the power to make or break a company's business strategy. Okay. And also that the location decision to support a low cost strategy require a particularly careful consideration. Once the management is committed to a specific location, many costs are firmly in place and difficult to reduce. Okay? So for instance, if a new factory location is in a region, if the company choose a new location in a region with high energy costs, even though they have a very good management with an outstanding energy strategy, but it's starting at a disadvantage because the location, the cost for location is very high. Okay. So the hard work or the effort um, for the company to uh, Company spend to determine the optimal facility location uh, is a very good investment. Selecting a facility location is becoming much more complex with a global globalization. Okay? Globalization has taken place because of the de development. So the drivers for the globalization, market economics, a better international communication, more rapid, reliable traveling and shipping, easy of capital flow between the countries, and high differences in the in labor costs. So many firms now considered to open a new office, factories, uh, retail stores, or bank outside the home country. So now, now location decision transcend national borders, no longer inside the national level only. Okay, so one approach to select The sequence of location decision often begins with choosing a country in which to operate. So an approach to select a country to identify what the parent organization believes are the key success factors needed to achieve the competitive advantage. Okay? So this is the six key success uh, six, 
uh, six possible key success factors uh, uh, to select the country. Right. So uh, sometimes uh, the organization also can choose uh, or can select the using a factors uh, in negative way, such as a crime rate. Okay, uh, to help them to make a decision about the country that they want to uh, open or to start the their, their new business. Once the once a firm decide which country is best for its location, so the next they have to focus on a region. Okay. okay, so select a region. So within that country, after choose the country, and then they have to select the region. Okay, so this is the key success factor they have to consider when they want to focus on region. Uh, of the chosen country. Okay, so this is an eight, they have an eight possible key success factors for to choose the region within their uh, chosen country. Okay. And the final step, okay, in the location decision process, choosing a specific site within the communication, the community. Okay. Right, so the company must pick one a location that is best suit for shipping and receiving, zoning, utility, utility size and cost. Okay, so this is a six uh, possible key success factor for company uh, to consider when you want to choose the site um, for their for their for the business, right? So this is a list from World Economic Forum. Okay, it ranks uh, the global competitiveness of the 144 countries. You can see here Switzerland placed the first because of its high rates of saving and investment, openness to trade, quality education, and efficient government. Okay. Besides the globalization, okay, so there is a other factors that affect the location decision, okay. So among these, uh, among these factors are labor productivity, foreign exchange, culture, changing attitudes toward the industry, and proximity to market suppliers and competitors. Now we will see about the labor productivity, okay. So when deciding on location, it's not Management no, no need to focus only the uh, area that have low wage rates. Okay, it's not you cannot consider this is by themselves. Okay, right. So they have to see that the productivity uh, for that area because if uh, there is a lower productivity, even though you have you uh, there is a low wage rates. But with a lower productivity, also will increase the total cost for that, uh, that in that area. So how to calculate then uh, to calculate the labor productivity? We have to calculate the labor cost per unit. How to calculate the labor cost per unit? Okay, labor cost per day, the cost, the wage that you have to pay per day for your labor, divide by units that they can produce. Per day, daily, okay, depends. If a measurement daily, then it's daily. If weekly, then weekly, okay. Alright, so to, to get the labor cost per unit, labor cost per day, the wage, uh, uh, wage rate per day, divide by output per day, okay. How many products that they can produce daily, okay. So, example here. Okay, on this elevator discovered, when it opened its plant, plant in Mexico in 1998, okay, uh, that's original. But 2000, uh, in 2011, Otis found a move to an automated plant in South Carolina more advantageous. Okay, so now management 
must also consider productivity. Better, um, better technology lah. Okay. If Otis elevator pays $70 per day with 60 units produced per day in South Carolina, it will spend less on labor than at Mexican plant that pays $25 per day with production of 20 units per day. Okay, so we can see at in South Carolina, they have to pay $70 per day. But in Mexico, only $25 per day. But in South Carolina, they will produce 60 units per day. But in Mexico, 20 units per day. Okay, right? So now we calculate the productivity in South Carolina. So this is uh, labor cost per day. Divide by productivity per day. Okay. Right. Okay. Labor cost divided by productivity. So we get equals to. In South Carolina is $1.70 per unit. Labor cost per unit. Okay. So in Mexico. $25. The wage daily is $25 per day. And the productivity is 20 Productivity is 20 units per day they can produce. Okay. Calculate the product labor cost per unit for Mexico. Uh, 25 divided by 20 and get 1.25 per unit. Okay. Even though we can see that in South Korea you have to pay more okay, on the wage but labor productivity per unit. Cost per unit you have you pay to the labor is only one dollar seventy cent. Okay, so the difference is about um eight cent per unit. Okay, the difference between South Carolina and Mexico. So we cannot see the wage rate daily uh, by themselves. Okay, you have to compare make comparison with the production daily production. Although wage rates and productivity may take uh, may make a country seem economical, unfavorable exchange rate so may have a significant impact on cost. Okay, right. So firms can take advantage of a particular favorable uh, exchange rate by relocating or exporting to a foreign country. However, the values of foreign currency continually rise and fall in most countries. Such changes could well make a was a good location in 2015, a disastrous one in 2019. Cost for location. Okay. So we can divide cost, uh, location cost into two categories, tangible and intangible. Tangible are those that the, those costs that easily measured and, and readily identifiable okay, and precise measured. Okay. They include utilities, labor, materials, tax, depreciation and other costs. Okay. And also in addition, such costs as transportation of raw materials, transportation of finished goods, and site construction also can put in the cost of location. Intangible costs are less easily quantified. Okay. So that included the cost for education, uh, public transport, facilities, community attitudes towards the industry and the company, quality and attitude of prospective employee. Okay. So also included Intangible cost is quality of life variables, okay, such as a climate and sports team. And this is this one will influence the personal recruiting. The political risk associated with a national, states, and local government <clears throat> attitudes towards the private and intellectual property. Zoning, pollution, employment stability, and maybe influx. Okay. 
governmental position at the time a location decision is made may not be lasting ones. Workers' value may also differ from country to country, region to region, and small town to city. Worker views regarding turnover, unions, and absenteeism are all relevant factors. Okay, so the company have to take this into consideration. Because this value can affect a company's decision whether to make offer to current workers in the firm relocates to a new location or not. Another greatest challenge in a global operation decision is dealing with another country's culture. Cultural variation in punctuality, punctuality by employees and suppliers make a marked difference in the production and delivery schedule. Bribery and other forms of corruption also create substantial economic inefficiency as well as ethical and legal problems in the global arena. Table provides a one ranking of corruption in countries around the world. Okay, so you can see from the least corrupt, Denmark is the least corrupt to the most corrupt uh, Russia, okay, most corrupt country. Locating near customer is extremely important, particularly for service organization like a pharmacies, restaurant, post office, or barbers. Okay? So they have to find that demographics and proximity to market are the primary location factors. Manufacturing firms also find it useful to be close to the customer when transporting finished goods is expensive or difficult. Okay? Maybe because they are bulky, heavy, or fragile. Example, okay, to be near the US market, foreign owned auto giants such as Mercedes, Honda, Toyota, Hyundai now are building millions of cars each year in the US. Another example, okay, with just in time production. Suppliers uh, want to locate near the users for a firm like a Coca-Cola, okay, whose product's primary ingredient is water. It makes sense, sense that they have to water plants in many cities rather than shipping heavy or sometimes fragile glass containers across the country. A firms locate near their raw materials and supply and suppliers because of their product is perishability, uh, high transportation costs or bulky products. Okay? Bakeries, dairy plants and frozen seafood processor deal with perishability material or material so they often uh, locate close to the supplier. Okay? So company um, Dependent on inputs of heavy or bulky raw material, okay, such as steel producer or iron ore, uh, usually face expensive inbound transportation costs. So, transportation costs become a major uh, factor, so they often look at too close to the supplier. Okay. Goods for which there is a reduction in bulk during production, example, trees to lumber typically need a facility near the raw materials. Both uh, manufacturing and service organization also like to locate near their competitors. Okay? Uh, this is so surprisingly. Okay? This, is, this is what I call a clustering. Okay? Uh, it occurs when a major resources is found in that region. Such resources include natural resources, information resources, venture capital resources, or talent resources. Okay, so this is an example uh, industry that exhibit the clustering and the reason why. Okay, you can see here wine making. Okay, so usually they locate at the Napa Valley, uh, US or Bordeaux region, France. Okay, because why is it here? Uh, at that location, natural resources of land and climate. Okay, software firms at Silicon Valley, Boston, Bangalore, Israel. Okay, 
because the talent resources of bright graduates in scientific and technical areas uh, and also because venture capital capital is nearby uh, so this is um Ketim Park, okay, Orlando, Florida, uh, Florida, because it's a hotspot for entertainment, warm weather, we warm weather, tourist, and expensive labor. Okay, uh, the training firms at Northern Mexico, Mexico, because it's a duty free to export, export to US. Computer hardware usually at Singapore, Taiwan, high technology. The reason considering because uh, high technology penetration rate in capital. Okay, fast food chains uh, in US lah, Wendy's, McDonald's, many side within one by each other. Okay, I uh, reason stimulate food sales, sales high traffic law flows. Okay, right. So this is the reason why uh, usually company manufacturer all services like to uh, locate near their competitors. Okay, so there are many factors, both qualitative and quantitative, to consider when choosing a location. Okay. Some of these factors are um, more important compared to others. Okay. So managers can use a waiting to make a, to make a decision process more objective. Okay. They list the factors and they give the weight for each objective compared. So which one is uh, apa, more important compared to others factors? So this is what we call a factor rating method. Okay, so this method popular because they can use in wide varieties of factors. They can use a different factors. Okay, uh, from education to recreation to labor skills, uh, and we can can ob can include the objective. Okay, alright. So the six steps in this method. Okay, this is a six step. First, you have to develop a list, uh, identify the list of relevant factors, what we call is a key success factors. After you identify the key success factors, you have to assign a weight to each factor. Okay. After you assign, then you have to develop scale for each factor, give a scale for each factor for that location, okay. give a score for each location. Okay. And then, after you have score, we multiply the weight by weight for each factor uh, um, and the total cost for each location. Okay? And then we make a recommendation based on the highest point score. Okay, now I will show the example. Okay? So this is an example. Okay? Uh, five flags over Florida, a US chain of 10 family oriented theme parks. Okay? Has decided to expand overseas by opening its first park in Europe. They want to they want to open their first part in Europe. Okay, so it wishes to select between the France and Denmark. The rating sheets. Okay, the next slide. In the next slide, we list the key success factors. Okay, that uh, management has already identified that uh, that important. Okay, and also the ratings and give the ratings for two possible sites uh, for in France and Denmark. Okay, let me start. Okay, so this is key success factor for this uh, site. Okay, labor availability and attitude, people to car ratio, per capita income. That, that management thing, this is important. Lah, okay, tax structure, education and health. Okay, so this is five factor uh, that important for this company to consider their relocation. Okay. So now the, the management give the weightage for each factor. You can see it's 0 0.25 for labor availability, 0 0.05 uh, people to car, okay, uh, 0 0.1 for the per capita income, tax structure is 0 0.39, education and health. So the management identified that the tax structure is more important compared to others. Okay, the second one is labor availability. Okay, the weightage. Okay. When you even uh, uh, assign for each factors, right? So now they give the scores for each location, okay? Scores out of 100, okay? Maybe they have to do some studies, okay? This is score for France, okay? For labor abilities, out of 100, is 70. Uh, for people to car ratio, okay? Out of 100, is 
50. Per capita is 85. Tax structure is 75. Education is 60. For Denmark, okay, labor availability is 60. Ready to car ratio, 60. Per capita is 80. Tax structure is 70 and education is 70. Okay, they give a score. Okay, they have to do some analysis lah to get the score. Okay, so next we will calculate the weighted scores. Okay, 0 0.25 times by this 70. Zero the weight for the weightage for labor times by score France score. Okay, times by so to get the weighted score for labor availability in France is 17.5. Okay, and we have we can do the rest. Okay, 0 0.05 times by 50 is 2.5. 0 0.1 times by 85. Okay, score say 8.5. Tax structure 0 0.39 times 75. Okay, and get the total weighted score. Okay, and then we do for the Denmark. Okay, 0 0.25 times by 16. Okay, got 15. Okay, weighted score, uh, labor availability for Denmark is 15. Okay, then we calculate uh, for the rest factors for Denmark in Denmark. Okay, okay now get uh, the weighted score, the total weighted score for France is 70.4 and the total weighted score for Denmark is 68. So based on this calculation, this, uh, this method, okay, so the company, this company should Choose France over the Denmark. <coughs> Locational cost volume analysis. Okay, so another method or technique for making an economic comparison of location alternative. Okay, so this method. Uh, we ident identify uh, fixed and variable cost and then graphing them for each location. Then we can determine which one provide the lowest cost. Okay. Uh, and this method, locational cost uh, volume analysis can be done mathematically or graphically. Okay. So the graphic that we want to, we, we can visualize uh, and also that we can provide the range of volume over which location is preferable. Okay. So there is three steps in this method. First, you have to determine the fixed and variable cost. Okay. And then plot the cost for each location and select the location with lowest total cost for expected uh, production. Okay. Okay. So now we, show, uh, we will see one example. Okay. Ismael, who may be owner of European Ignitions Manufacturing his capacity. He is considering three locations, Athens, Brussels, and Lisbon for a new plant. The company wishes to find the most economical location for an expected volume of 2,000 units per year. Okay, so they, they, uh, they uh, have a certain volume, the production volume. Okay. So Mohobi conducts a location locational cost volume analysis. You uh, get a uh, fixed cost, volume cost, and fixed cost, variable cost, and the selling price. Okay. And the most important is fixed cost and uh, variable cost. Okay. So, so he determines that the fixed cost per year at the site is thirty thousand. $30,000, $60,000, and $110,000 respectively. And the variable cost are $75 per unit, $45 per unit, and $25 per unit respectively. The expected selling price is $120. Okay, so this is, yeah, highlight the most uh, important information to run the, uh, to do the, this analysis. Okay. First, you have three locations, Athens, Brussels, and Lisbon. Okay. So, the expected volume is 2,000 units per year. Fixed cost, okay, uh, 30,000, 60,000, and 110,000. 
variable cost okay $75, $45 and $25 and the selling price is $120 okay okay we have three locations Athens, Brussels and Lisbon okay selling price expected volume Okay, so now fixed cost, we list the fixed cost and we list all the variable cost. So then we can, how we can calculate, uh, calculate uh, total cost? Okay, total cost goes to fixed cost plus variable cost times volume. Volume is 2000. Okay, so this is an example total cost for Athens 30,000 plus 75,000 times by 20,000. So we get 180,000. So you can use this formula for the rest for the Brussels and Lisbon. Okay, from this list, we can see that the total cost, the lowest total cost is Brussels. Okay, so if the company want to produce volume 2,000 units, okay, so the Brussels provide the lowest cost location. Okay, so this is on, you only have to do this if you already have the volume, okay, uh, number of volume. Okay, now we will do some certain analysis to identify the lowest total cost for the certain production volume. Okay, so this is the original information from the previous table. Okay, so now what we will do, we will do the crossover analysis. Okay, uh, we find, we, we will identify the crossover between uh, Athens and Brussels, and the letter between Brussels and Lisbon, like the previous uh, in previous chapter, okay, the crossover for process, crossover point for process, this is same as uh, a previous one, okay, but this is a crossover point between two locations, okay, so we want to identify at which at uh, what volume, okay, uh, so this both location the total cost is equal, okay. Right, so crossover between atoms. So now you need uh, total cost for uh, atoms equals to, uh, sorry, okay, Let's transfer here, and equals to fixed cost plus variable cost times x for Brussels. So now we, we still don't know what is the volume, okay? We would like to identify the volume that uh, total cost for atoms equals to total cost. Okay, and then we derive, okay, right, now we get the volume equals to, uh, x is equal to 1000, what does it mean? Okay, means that if, if the company, this company, um, this manufacturer, like to produce volume less than 1000, so this, uh, uh, this manufacturer better choose Athens compared to Brussels. Why is it choose Athens? Remember, uh, in the cost volume analysis or break-even uh, point analysis, okay? Uh, lower than this point, select the lower total, the lowest fixed cost, okay? If you would like to, to produce less than 1,000, so select the, uh, the the lowest fixed cost. Okay, if the manufacturer want to produce more than one thousand, more than this volume, okay, more than one thousand, so the manufacturer should select uh, the location with the lowest variable cost. Okay, more less than less than this volume, uh, choose the lowest fixed cost. More than this volume, choose the lowest variable cost. Okay, so in this case, if produce less than 1000, then preferred atoms. If more than 1000, then Brussels. Okay, so the next crossover point, okay, between the Brussels and Lisbon. Okay, so this is a total cost for Brussels. Okay, and then the total cost for uh, Lisbon. Okay. And then we do some derivation, you will get x equals to 2005. Okay, it means that if the manufacturer would like uh, to produce volume more than 2500, okay, so Lisbon would eat the uh, so better choose Lisbon, okay, because they uh, it, that is the lowest total cost, 
means that we get the more profit okay lower cost more profit okay so more than 2005 better choose lisbon less than 1000 select Athens. okay means that between 1000 to 2500 brussels is better okay uh, okay less than 1000 Athens. uh more than 2005 uh, Lisbon so between 1000 and 2005 is Brussels okay so now we, we put uh, remember that this additional cost value analysis whether you can do it in a mathematical or graphical okay so now we plot okay, the Athens plot a uh, graph for Athens this is for Brussels and this is for Lisbon okay 1000 and 2005 okay so this area uh, is the Athens lowest cost in the middle is the Brussels lowest cost and more than 2005 is Lisbon is the lowest cost okay so they can make a select with that whether if they want to produce 2500 and if they want to produce 2500 so they can choose either Brussels or Lisbon okay Cost is equal to the cost is equal. Okay, the center of gravity method is another method to identify the location. This is a mathematical technique used for finding the location of a distribution center that will minimize the distribution cost. So the method takes into account the location of markets, volume of goods shipped to those markets and shipping costs in finding the best location for a distribution center. So the first step in the center of gravity method is that a place location on a coordinate system. Okay. Uh, I will show you later okay. uh, to illustrate how to put it here. Okay. So, uh, and then we will calculate uh, the x and y uh, for the center of gravity that okay using the next formula okay so this is formula to identify the center of gravity method x coordinate of the center is um x uh, coordinate x location i times by the quantity of goods move divide by the total of quantity moves to or from the location that's for x coordinate y coordinate total y coordinate of location times by quantity of goods move divide by total of quantity good move okay, so this is the formula uh, to calculate this okay example for center of gravity method Sequence discount department store, a chain of four large target type outlets has store location in Chicago, Pittsburgh, New York, and Atlanta. They are currently being supplied out of an old and inadequate warehouse in Pittsburgh, the site of chain's first store. So the firm wants to find some central location in which to build a new house. Eh, sorry, new warehouse. Alright, so this is your four store location, Chicago. So the number of movement, okay, uh, 2000, uh, 2000 movement, okay, Pittsburgh, 1000, New York, 1000, Atlanta, to, to or from Atlanta, 2000 ship. Okay, now we plot, uh, we get the, uh, plot the, the location for each um, location Chicago, uh, uh, New York, Pittsburgh, and the Atlanta. Okay, so this is the coordinate for each location. Okay, um, and then we will use this coordinate, coordinate and the Q, the that movement to find the center of gravity. Okay, All right. So example in this in this Chicago, thirty x is thirty. Y is 120 and quantity the movement is 2000. Alright, so calculate uh, X coordinate. Okay, so this is for Chicago. X 
uh, coordinate times by um, 2000 ship it's for Pittsburgh uh, coordinate x is 90 times by 1000 New York 130 times by 1000 movement and Atlanta 60 coordinate x uh, times by 2000 movement okay so this movement you have to refer to the previous slide okay Divide by total quantity for these four location 2000 plus 1000 plus 1000 plus 2000. So now we get the x coordinate for center of gravity method is 66.7. Then we calculate the y coordinate. Okay, y coordinate for Chicago times by number of ship uh, for Chicago. Uh, y coordinate for Pittsburgh time by, times by uh, uh, number of ship for Pittsburgh. Okay, y coordinate for New York times by number of ship for New York. Y coordinate for Atlanta times by number of ship for Atlanta divided by total quality, quantity, uh, total movement of ship uh, for this four location. 2000 plus 1000 plus 1000 plus 2000. So Y coordinate is 93.3. So now we will plot in this one okay so identify this is the center of gravity so this is where should they choose the new uh, location for the their new uh, new warehouse okay so this uh, location okay so this is near around near around the ohio eh? if you put the uh, the, in their maps, so this is maybe around Ohio, okay, or nearby feedback. The objective of the transportation model is to determine the best pattern of shipment from several several points of supply to several points uh, of demand, okay. So that uh, the result you can minimize the total production shipping cost. Okay, this is to solve this one transportation model. We we have a very special class. Okay, but we call it a linear programming uh, solving problem. Uh, so this is the example of uh, Volkswagen supply network. Okay, so you see. Okay, so now you can see that. Um, Volkswagen of Mexico ships a vehicle for assembly. Okay. Um, assembly and parts to Volkswagen uh, of New York sends assemblies to Volkswagen of uh, Brazil and receive parts assemblies from headquarters in Germany. So this, this we use the transportation model to solve this problem. The focus uh, uh, for location analysis in service sector is focused more on maximize the revenue compared to the industrial or manufacturing sector. Uh, their focus in, is on to minimize the cost. Okay, because uh, a service firm find out that the location often has more impact on revenue than cost. Okay. So therefore, the location focus of for service firm should be on determining the volume of customers and revenue. Okay, so there are eight major determinants of volume and revenue for the service firm: purchasing power of the customer, the drawing area when they want to choose the location. Okay, service and image compatibility with the demographics of the customer drawing area. The competition in the area, the quality of competition, uniqueness of the firms and competitors' location, physical qualities of facilities and neighboring business, the operating policies of the firm, and last is the quality of management. Okay, so this table. Okay, this table helps to differentiate okay, uh, 
between service and manufacturer sector decision. Okay, so between the service and manufacturer. Okay, so service focus on revenue, uh, manufacturer focus on cost. Okay, so revenue uh, and also based on the physical quality, the parking area, security, appearance. Uh, the cost determinants for the services usually based on the rent, uh, the management caliber, uh, the policy, operation policy, okay, the hours they spend, and the operation wage rates, okay. Uh, okay, so once the goods uh, focus is based on cost, okay, uh, the cost is about transportation cost, shipment, energy, and so on, okay. And also the intangible and future cost. Okay, the attitude toward the union, quality of life, others in intangible. This is based on tangible and intangible. Okay, so the techniques uh, to determine the location for services usually we use a regression. Okay, factor rating method, traffic account, demographic analysis, purchasing power analysis, center of gravity method, and geographic information system. Okay, so assumption when you want to uh, for location strategy in services. Okay, so first is, is the, the major determinant is revenue. Okay, so high customer contact. Uh, okay, and the revenue function is more critical compared to cost. Okay, so the techniques for uh, location strategy for goods uh, for manufacturer. Usually use a transportation method, factor rating method, locational cost volume analysis, and crossover chart. Okay, so the assumption is that the major determinant is cost. Okay, and the major cost can be identified explicitly for each site. Okay, usually low customer contact. Okay, and uh, intangible cost also can be evaluated. Okay, so geographic information system is another tool. Uh, that help uh, firms to make a successful analytical decision, analytical decision with regard to location. Okay, so this system, okay, can uh, store, access, uh, display, and link demographic information to a geographical geographical location. Okay. So the data in the GIS geographic information system, okay, uh, got details, census data, okay, by block, data by block, track, city, county, congressional district, okay, so can you get detailed data, zip code, okay, and maps of every street, highway, bridge, and tunnel in the US or in any other country, okay. Uh, utility such as electrical, water, and dust line. The lines, okay, the, the lines is underground, though. The, uh, uh, apa, where they install the utilities for each area. So you can uh, get in, you can get from this database, okay, GIS. Okay, uh, the data about all the rivers, mountains, lakes, and forests, okay, uh, and also that about major airports, college hospitals, okay, location of major services, right? So the example, okay, airlines, okay, airline use GIS to identify airport where ground services are the most effective, okay? So then this information then used to help schedule and to decide where to purchase fuel, meals, and other services. Okay, another example, commercial office building developers use GIS in the selection of cities for future construction. Okay. So building new office space takes several years. Therefore, developers value the database that GIS can offer. Okay. So GIS, eh, they can, um, they can uh, address the five elements in each city, okay, the residential area, retail shops, cultural and entertainment centers, crime incidents, and also the transportation option, okay. okay so this is example, uh, GIS near uh, this A, okay, interface, right, okay. That's all for this chapter. Thank you very much.